Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Entity Maze, and welcome to my Pokemon Sun and Moon review series. Today, I'll be reviewing episode 120, Lana Fishes Like Kyogre, which was a uh, adequate episode at best for me. So, if you want to know more, then get relaxed everybody, as I will now jump right into this review. Let's go! So the episode begins off with us witnessing Mallow, Lily, Sophocles and Lana fishing some Pokemon for leisure. Which if I had to pick an overall favourite moment from this scene, it would be Rotom just floating watching all the characters try to fish up a Pokemon and shouting do your best. In which this gets the characters angry as Rotom was not helping despite having arms and legs we've seen it use. He's just a lazy bugger isn't he? <laughs> but anyway, regardless of that scene with the classmates, Ash and Lana, who wasn't with the others, are actually seen to be walking on water in Brion's bubbles near the island the classmates were fishing on. Which, I don't know about you guys, but it quite surprised me to see Ash and Lana walking in these bubbles. As when Brion was just a poplio, it couldn't make any of the human characters fit inside a bubble. Just Pokemon. Like, wow. Because of all the training Lana and Brion conducted, humans can now finally fit inside these bubbles, and the bubbles are even sturdy enough for characters to walk inside of. Even if it breaks all sorts of logic. <laughs> Which is an excellent display of it and Lana's development. The two getting one step closer to achieving their goal of wanting to explore the sea in a bubble. In fact, this episode has the two come another step closer to that goal as well. It's just around the corner at this point. But we'll get to that later. As continuing on with his story, Ash and Lana decide to have a race in this bubble. Which man, I wish we could do stuff like that in real life. However, what I wish wouldn't happen in real life is accidentally getting sucked into a whirlpool under the sea made by the legendary Pokemon Kyogre. In which, after Ash and Lana manage to surface alongside Kyogre, Lana having a superhero landing, whereas Ash is to put up the joke, they realise that Kyogre is actually badly poisoned. So of course, being the caring characters they are, they decide to help Kyogre out by attempting to give it an antidote which cures poison. Lana puts this antidote on a lure she received from Misty from quote, the other day, end quote. Like, what? Are you saying episode 102 or 103 was only a couple days ago, or did you get this in the post? Mail for Americans. Properly male, but that caught me off guard at first. But anyhow, it's nice to see Lana having a special lore like this, seeming that she's a water type trainer, and best friends with Misty. However, upon giving this antidote to Kyogre, hunters then approach out of nowhere, attacking Ash and Lana, and capturing Kyogre for themselves, who one had stated they'd been trying to capture this Pokemon for a while, it escaping their grasp for the last time around. In which, for the rest of the episode, we pretty much watch Ash command all of his Pokemon to attack the hunters attacking him, along with Lana's Pokemon helping out. While Lana tries to get Kyogre to eat the lore she fishes out to it, so it can heal its poison and escape the Pokemon hunters. Melton, who wasn't actually battling, actually helping Lana out by eating some of the Superine the hunters used to capture Kyogre. Which of course, malfunctions. Which not only is a cool way to use Melton to help resolve a problem, but the entire battling scenes we saw were quite cool as well. I mean, obviously they're nothing as special as rival battles or whatever else, but it could satisfy your needs of wants to see some action. In fact, I really appreciate how each of Ash's Pokemon got a chance to shine in this battle. Ones who are even weak to the Pokemon they're battling, putting in good work. We even saw Turricat use Fire Blast for the first time in a battle since learning it in episode 108. I think anyway, correct me if wrong. Sino, aww, this scene was adorable. Eventually, as you can guess though, our characters won against the Hunters. As Kyoga, after a bit of a struggle, hooked onto Lana's law and sent all the Hunters flying to then land right under Officer Jenny's feet, which was kind of amusing. Altogether regarding this Hunter plot though, I guess it was okay. I mean, I usually like to watch Hunters appear because of their stunning technology and their amusing yet also intimidating personalities. However, I didn't really seem to connect with any of the Hunters this time around, which is disappointing. Plan-wise though, 
Oh yeah, it was a good plan, with alright action. Just, you know, every 10 year old can easily bring down an evil plan. <laughs> Despite the horn just being gone though, that doesn't conclude the episode. As even though Kyoka healed itself and sent them flying, it got a little angry. In fact, what am I saying? It was furious. I mean, I'm sure you would be if you tried getting abducted for being such a powerful being. However, Lana was still hooked onto Kyoga, so Lana was caught up in this wrath, getting thrown in the air and pushed around under the sea. In which, Brion then decides to try and help Lana by grabbing her under the sea. In which, after the XP it gained from the battles today, which many people forget about when it comes to the next moment, and even showcasing its strong bond for Lana, it then evolves into Primarina and rescues Lana, bringing her to an island where Ash of the other Pokemon stood for safety. Yay! Well, actually, that was a fake yay. As we all unfortunately knew, Lana's Brion was going to evolve thanks to both the previews and summary spoiling it. Like, what was Pokemon thinking? It would be way more exciting if we witnessed this blindly. I feel like the plot of the episode itself, being Hunters trying to capture a Kyogre, was good enough to advertise the episode with. It didn't need the evolution advertised. What a shame. And I really hope something like this doesn't happen again. If you don't read the summaries or watch the previews though, then I suppose this would have been hype inducing for you. So that's good at least. I'm glad some people may have got to witness this blindly. But regardless of knowing this revelation though, it's nice to see Lana with a Primarina now. If it's a so well, and although some people really dislike how Lana has a fully evolved starter before Ash, I don't personally mind. As when you think about it, Lana will have had a Poplio a little bit longer than Ash had a Torica. Plus, you know, not only is she trying to achieve her dream, but she wants to become stronger when it comes to battles. So it's not like she doesn't deserve Primarina either. Seeming as I mentioned that goal, I actually cannot wait to see what else can be done for them trying to achieve it. Most likely using their exclusive C move in another episode. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the Kiori training camp episode, where Sophocles and maybe even Malo will be learning to use C moves under the guidance of Kiori. Oh, before we move on, here's a side note. Primarina is such a beautiful Pokemon. I know we've seen it in the anime already, but this episode just reminded me of the beauty it radiates even more. Like seriously, look at it, it's so... ah, uh, adorable. With all of that now said though, let's now continue on with this episode. Upon landing on the island, Lana states to everybody that she needs to get Primarina to use this newly revealed sink, which I guess all Brio learn upon evolving in the anime at least, to calm Kyogre down before it causes some big trouble elsewhere. In which, they then successfully managed to do this, by Lana riding on Primarina while she hooks onto Kyogre, fish it up in the air, although Lana's back should technically be broken due to how heavy the Pokemon is, and then Primarina used a move, which was uh, such a delightful scene. I really adore this shot. I even got major episode 33 vibes upon this scene. In fact, just by thinking about it more, there was a lot of similarities between this episode and episode 33, it being a uh, somewhat bigger sequel, bigger because of Kyogre and the Pokemon Hunters. Though, when it comes to rank of the episodes, I personally like episode 33 more, which you can see why I like it so much in my top 10 trials video I'll leave in the icon. End of this episode off though, upon Kyogre being calmed down, Lana expresses her love to Kyogre before it leaves to go elsewhere, and she and Ash then explain to their friends upon being reunited that Lana reeled up a Kyogre. Which of course, they don't believe this whatsoever at first, due to the gag Lana occasionally does of stating she reeled up a Kyogre, despite never meeting one. Great for Boy Who Cried Wolf vibes. I just wish this episode ended off with the classmates still not believing Ash or Lana though, as eventually, they did believe them. I mean, I guess they did have to find a way to say how Brion evolved. With that said though, that concludes the episode. Which all together, I can say this episode was decent at best. It was just a generic Pokemon Hunter and Sun and Moon Evolution episode, with a gag becoming reality as well. 
Nothing else really being too special within my own personal eyes. I know for a fact that some people will be disappointed that Lana didn't catch Kyoga though. As literally so many people before this episode aired thought Lana would catch this legendary Pokemon because of how many mythicals and legendaries have been getting caught or looked after within this series recently. But for me personally, I knew this wasn't going to happen. As one, Kyoga is far more powerful than any of the mythical or legendary Pokemon our gang have, meaning they would be too OP and Lana would probably win for League. Two, we knew thanks to the summary that this would be a story about Pokemon Hunters, so I knew Kyogre would want to go home. And three, Kyogre is always seen to be in the water within the anime. If it was beached, it would probably die, making Lana unable to use it. We've seen other Pokemon like this in the anime as well, such as Gorbys. So, yeah. <laughs> Man, imagine if this did happen though. I wouldn't even know how to feel. But anyway, yeah, aside from that which I really wanted to say, this episode as you can see was uh, kinda nice. Lorna is probably the best of her classmates at this moment in time regarding strength as well, which is lovely to say. I would recommend this episode if you haven't watched it already, but only if you have free time, as honestly the previews and summaries just gave everything you needed to know away anyway, plus this review. <laughs> Anyhow, when coming to the leaderboards, I'll be putting this episode as number 21 on my season 3 leaderboard, as I feel like I liked it just a teeny bit more than the previous episode, mostly due to reaction, whereas it will be number 89 out of 120 on the overall leaderboard. To see the full leaderboards though, a link will be in the description below. And if you have seen this episode, then do let me know in the comments down below what you personally thought of it though. i love to hear as we can have different opinions. Additionally, if you did enjoy this review as well, which is now coming to an end, then please be sure to consider leaving a like, a share, and if you're new here, and subscribe along with it to that bell icon to stay in loop with all things Pokemon anime related. If you want to support this channel any further away, I also have a Patreon. Thank you for watching everybody, this is Entity Mains, signing out.